Thanks for having me. I'm Rhonda O'Connor from Metro Waste Authority, and this is Tanner. He's our intern for the summer. It's his second summer with us. His first year with us was spent cleaning streams, day in and day out. Um, he's doing a little more indoor work this year, which I think he likes. <laughs> But he had a lot of fun doing the stream cleanup last year. So thanks for having us. And again, thank you for adopting a stream. Uh, we've had 22 uh, sections adopted and about 30 miles of stream adopted so far to date. And we started it a year ago. And about six of the teams had been in existence already. So um, we're just adding on to what they have started. So the first thing we like to talk about is the current conditions of water quality. You know, why did we even think about doing this program? So, and this is just a snapshot of like our area. And you can, I don't know if you can see it very well, most of these are unassessed, the blue. But these red ones have been assessed. Those are the bigger waterways in, uh, in central Iowa. And they're polluted. Pretty much all of them are polluted. Um, and then there's a few, there's one right here, this is the one that I can see is unpolluted. <laughs> um, and if I, if, that, if, if I remember correctly, that's Jordan Creek. Um, it's a pretty small uh, creek that goes through West Des Moines along E.P. True, along the trail there. So it's kind of sad that we have that much polluted water in our area, but many of you probably know why, maybe not, I don't know. But our water comes from this main watershed uh, so it's not just the waterways, it's all the, the things that stream into the water. So groundwater, um, you know, we have farms, nitrates, there's a lot of those things that contribute to it. Um, so we thought let's get, what's the first thing we can do is maybe just get the litter going, getting out of it. You know, we can't necessarily, you can't change what farmers are doing, but we can pull trash out that's visible. So one thing that people probably don't think about unless they've participated in like trash bash is Ill illegal dumping is happening. Um, when we started this program last year, I went to five sections of waterways in the Des Moines area. I found a tire at each place. It was kind of, I, I'm like, who comes to this spot in the center of the city and dumps a tire? And it's quite common. Um, so here's just photos from April. Um, I have a team in West Des Moines Jordan Creek, which is unpolluted, that's what they pulled out of it. Um, so that's kind of sad. So I think that might have been tested a long time ago and it maybe needs to be retested. But DuPont Pioneer at Trash Bash, um, this was, they had tons of canoes and they had several loads looking like that coming out of Easter Lake in Des Moines. Um, we have a small team in Altoona, it's just a father son, and they easily grabbed five bags of trash in two hours. And this is a tiny little section of a stream and a pond in Altoona. Um, so it happens. The annual cost of litter, this is just the public sector. It's $17.5 million in the state of Iowa. Keep Iowa Beautiful does a, a survey. They've done it 10 years ago and then they redid it, uh, redid the survey this, this last year. And this is uh, interviewing cities, the counties, state fair, all those types of places. And what does the cost of litter pickup cost you? So most of those people don't factor in volunteer hours. So they, this is probably triple. So people just littering, this is what we pay to have it cleaned up through our tax dollars. So it's a huge problem. Uh, when I sat at that meeting, I thought, how many how do you stop it? That was a big discussion is how do you stop it? Because there's people who probably just do it, don't care. How do you change that mindset? Um, and one of them was writing tickets. That's not a high priority for police. They're out trying to stop crime. Um, but how many police officers could you put on the street for that? Um, it's interesting to think about. So why does it matter? Why does litter and keeping our waterways clean matter? Um, it's our lifeline. They supply half our drinking water, rivers do. Your water bill reflects the cost of water and the cost to clean it up. When it comes out of your tap, there's a lot of effort to clean it out, um, clean all the nitrates out of it and other things. Sustain our natural systems. I remember seeing this when I was a little kid in grade school. I thought that's a perfect <laughs> image to show. Um, it's an important cycle. There's more than three million miles of rivers that crisscross our nation. I found a website that shows, here's the major waterways, but when you zoom in, this kind of shows you that watershed. So 
Groundwater, it's an issue. Nearly every American lives within one mile of a river or stream. And this is one of the places I went and found like three tires a year ago. Um, it's a trail right along Four Mile, which um, is very close to, to where you guys adopted. Provides recreational opportunities. If people see litter, it kind of takes away from the experience. Your health, if you don't have clean water, I think that probably Americans take it for granted, but if you go to other countries, clean water is a huge issue. Um, and you don't think about it, but it could become that kind of problem for us too. Um, these are more ocean animals, but uh, animal health is affected. We have fish and wildlife. You guys work with animals every day. Um, and they're affected by the litter. <clears throat> Flooding, when there's litter on our streets, it clogs up our storm, storm drains. It helps floods areas, hurts your road quality. Your economy, it threatens tourism and recreation. You know, <clears throat> I don't know if anyone saw on the news um, the river walk, the fisher, the, the anglers were dumping their fish guts and then there's just general litter. You know, this is a beautiful area we've created here in Des Moines and there's litter. Now the anglers are saying, hey, we're not the only part of the problem. There's people just going there and littering. And they had trash barrels and recycling barrels and people were still littering five feet away. So um, when someone comes to our area, what do they see? Litter, it's, it's kind of, does, does people want to come back? And that goes back to the cost, almost 20 million. So with adopt -a stream we're hoping to change the story. Let's stop it. And encourage people to go adopt a stream, which you guys have done. So this is kind of made for people who I'm trying to get them to adopt. You guys have already done it. So, um, but since you haven't done a cleanup yet, hopefully this will be helpful. You find a stream. You guys found Little Four Mile um, between Altoona and Pleasant Hill. Um, if you haven't contacted the landowner, I think it's the city, and it sounds like Copper Creek uh, Golf Course might be one too. Oh, and just because Blank Park, Park Zoo adopted a stream doesn't mean you guys can't do it on your own, just oh, yes. in your own communities. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Maybe you have so much fun you decide to do one in your backyard. We were at Pioneer a few weeks ago and a lot of people signed up to help the team, but they also said, you know, there's a creek in my backyard, I'm interested in adopting it. Um, and it doesn't have to be a big formal thing. One guy's already doing it and I said, hey, we'll formalize it and we'll get a sign up and, and uh, report, you, report what you pull out of it. Um, the key thing I think you guys have plans to do is kind of look at the stream, inspect it ahead of time pick entry and exit points, um, where can you easily access the stream, get in and out. <clears throat> um, if you see ahead of time really hard, large heavy items that you know, we don't, don't move it, we don't want you guys to get injured, but make note of it and let the city know because what they'll do is their public work staff will hopefully go out and um, get that removed. Yeah, they helped us remove like two cars, like we found vehicles like on the side of streams. I don't know how long they had been there. Yeah. D decades, probably. Hopefully you won't find any in Little Four Mile. <laughs> oh. Those are probably the no, back <laughs> Polk, Polk County areas. No, there, there shouldn't be any. <laughs> but yeah, they pulled a lot of interesting things out. Um, I know that the person I spoke with at Pleasant Hill said they'd love to help with the trash disposal. So when you pull it out, you, you can communicate ahead of time with them and they'll help collect it. Um, we do have cleanup supplies that you can reserve through our Bondurant location. Um, if you don't want any of those and you just want trash bags, I, can, I keep those at our downtown office. And I do encourage a rain date, because a lot of times you don't plan on weather, but this is, if you plan a, a pick a rain date ahead of time, everyone will know ahead of time, this is your date. Uh, clean it up, the day you clean it up. Communicate that gathering point where you want everyone to meet. Kind of give a short welcome. Uh, we do have the liability waivers that we um, require them signed. It protects you, your team, and it protects Adopt-a-Stream as well, too. Um, we have a one-sheet safety talk to give everyone to make sure they know ahead of time do's and don'ts, um, things that you uh, want to plan for. Wear sunscreen. <laughs> Usually you want to tell that ahead of time. Um, manage time expectations. A lot of people feel like they have to clean the entire section that day. <clears throat> you want people to volunteer again. So we always say put a time limit on it. If, if you've got 20 people, maybe you do two hour shifts, 10 people, 10 people, or you just do everyone at once for two hours. But it's summertime, it's hot, you guys work outdoors, you probably know. 
Um, it doesn't have to be cleaned in one day. Um, so if you only do half of it, um, I've had some teams say the first time you do it, it's usually really dirty and you'll find a lot, but the next year it maybe isn't as much. And one team said they keep adopting more sections because it's clean if they do it once a year. Um, it could become every other year. Um, and then also you, we put up signs saying that you've adopted it. So ideally, people would not dump. If they see someone is picking up garbage here, I shouldn't leave it. I don't know that that works, but we hope it does. Um, and then also provide food and incentives depending on the size of your group. Um, and if you like, solicit media coverage. Uh, I think it's a great way to say Blank Park Zoo is out in the community. Um, promoting clean water. And then after your event, we love to know how much you've collected. We have an online form, and then we actually report these results to the DNR every year. Um, it's an it's environmental objective we have, and our goal is to increase how many sections are adopted and how much garbage is collected and track that. And down the road, if you really, really care, we can um, provide to do water testing, it's an eight-hour training, but teams that want to do that, we can connect you with those kinds of resources so you can test your water quality every year um, and see, are we making a difference? <clears throat> uh, and then also, I encourage people to take pictures. We love to post them on our Facebook page and on the website um, so people can see. Um, it's pretty powerful, those three pictures I showed, I think, um, when people see photos like that, it makes you realize how much garbage is going in the wrong place. So what's the impact after you guys do cleanup? You've improved water quality. You've increased the aesthetics of that waterway and that community. You hopefully have decreased the health, um, the threats to health and safety. You know, there's times when our lakes have been declared too polluted to swim in. Um, I know that your waterway does go into Four Mile, and there's Copper Creek Park uh, Lake right there. But those are, those are things to consider um, as you clean up. And ideally, it serves as a, as a deterrent. Um, that Keep Iowa Beautiful survey, they did it 10 years ago, and then they just did it this last year. There's really been no change, and that's kind of depressing. <laughs> so it, the question was, what do we do differently? Because it kicked off, let's do the Adopt-A-Highway program. You see those throughout the state through Keep Iowa Beautiful. Um, but what they're seeing is the same litter um, 10 years later. So it is kind of depressing. So I'm hoping that people who go in and do it, you speak about it, share with others, hey, I, we pulled 10 bags of litter out of this waterway. Maybe it'll affect the people who are doing the littering, and uh, they'll think twice. Property values increase. Litter and garbage does decrease property value, so if you have a pretty looking community, it can help your property value if you are a homeowner. Um, in our mind, uh, more partnerships is always a good thing. We have Blank Park Zoo partnering with us, and we're partnering with the cities to make it better, and that's always good. And hopefully more responsibility. I think after you clean up a waterway, you probably feel a little more invested in your community. And then I always say to people, does that feel like too much? Because I think some people probably think, you know what, I don't want to spend an evening or weekend getting in water. <laughs> Especially you guys, you're outdoors all day, right? So if anything, do the easy but still impactful things. So reduce waste by buying items with less packaging um, or buying items that are recyclable. One example I like to give is Cool Whip tubs aren't recyclable but aerosol whip can, whipped cream cans are, because it's a metal aerosol can. So I personally do prefer the whip tubs, but occasionally I'll buy the aerosol, because I know I can recycle that after the fact. So look for that type of um, stuff. Um, put stuff in the proper place. Trash goes in the trash, recycling goes in the recycling. Sometimes you may have to take 10 extra feet to put it in the recycling bin. Um, do the small things. Pick up litter when you see it. Um, every day I walk into my office and there's litter. Um, you can pick it up on your way in. Um, report littering from cars. I don't know if you know you can do this. <laughs> 188, no litter, no E. Um, the Keep Iowa Beautiful office is in our building and I asked him about this because I saw someone throw their butt out the window in front of me. 
And I wrote down the license plates because I thought, can I even do anything about this? And I went in the next day and he said, yes, if you have the license plate number, if you'd happen to know the car make and model, that helps too. Um, but they send him a letter to the person who owns that vehicle and says, it was spotted you littering at this time date. This is what it costs to pick up after you. Just encouraging them not to do it anymore. So it's not a ticket, not a fine. I mean, a police officer can do that, but um, if you ever get annoyed enough, you can report that information through that line and they'll send them a letter. Um, I didn't know that. Um, report illegal dumping to the county sheriff. Um, for Trash Bash, I took pictures of, uh, I can't think of the park, it's on the south side, and it's up on a huge hill, you can see downtown from it. And someone literally goes there probably in the middle of the night and dumps tires down that, that uh, hill. So if you know of that or see it, um, report it. It's hard to catch those people, I'm sure. Um, and when you're camping, hiking, and boating, carry out your waste. Whatever you took with you, take it back. Um, and then most importantly, teach your kids to do the same. And that's it. I'll take any questions, and Tanner as well. Um, yes? How, what percentage is actual litter versus, like, I saw a gutter in there, storm damage, the wind blows it off, and mm -hmm. it ends up. Do you, do you have any idea how it would? Well, my guess is, the, was it the, that Barker Lamar one? Those, those two, the three photos from that one cleanup, those were not near homes. So it was probably storm damage, but someone put it in their truck and drove it to a waterway and dumped it. So those cleanup areas are not next to a house. They are parks that are surrounded by woods, wooded areas. So it is dumping. Um, so yeah, it's, I would say most of it is litter. I, I never, until I got involved with this program, would have never thought to drive my, my car to a hidden park area and just dumped it. And they choose waterways, <laughs> which is very interesting, because then it's hidden and no one can find it, versus just dumping it in the middle of a park, I guess. Yeah, the most common dumping, you'll see people drive to bridges and just check it off the ledge and you'll, that's where you'll get a lot of the tires, but you'll, you'd be surprised how far down the stream those tires can travel. Because um, yeah, so especially once the streams start to flood, once the water levels are up, those tires can move around. Then they slowly get buried in the sand, and then you have to dig them out with a shovel, yeah. which is not fun. But. And Metro Waste Authority actually has a tire program with the, the, the communities in Polk County with free, free tire drop-offs for residents. So residents can take a tire to these drop four up to four you can call get special exception if you need it, but we don't want commercial businesses to do it. But we spend about $35,000 a year hosting those tire drop-offs in the area communities. And it's so people won't go chuck it off a bridge into a waterway. But um, those people are <laughs> either don't know about the drop-offs or, or to, I mean, there's a lot of stockpiling. I personally have never had a tire to get rid of. I go and <laughs> they change it and they, there's a recycling fee if you look. When you get new tires, it, they'll charge you to recycle your tires. But um, someone is doing it and hanging on to them and then dumping them. Any other questions? Yeah. Could you just tell me a little about how, um, like, Adopt-A-Stream fits into the philosophy of the Metro Waste? Like, how is here? Yeah, we, we started it a year ago. We actually work with the DNR with our environmental, environmental management system. And we have different goals and objectives around different different things and one of them is um, water quality so a lot of it we have a lot of land at the landfill and so we we have initiatives there um, but one thing we also do with the communities is we do a lot of the curbside programs we do recycling and yard waste at most of them and some of them we actually manage the garbage contracts so we have a really close relationship with these communities like we do the tire drop-offs so um, a lot of them reached out to us. We have an adopt a street program that we helped West Des Moines start up as well. And so it kind of led to, you know, why aren't we doing water quality too? Waterways run through our cities. It's litter. Litter should be going to the landfill. <laughs> um, and so that's part of it was let's, let's help the communities. No one else is doing it. There was groups trying to, there was a group, uh, the Walnut Creek Watershed already existed. We tied on to what they were doing. Um, they actually really helped us start this program and then actually last year we we paid interns to go out and clean 
there was a, yep. five of you? And four. Four. And Every day for eight hours. Summer. And they went to known, really contaminated waterways. And we thought instead of paying kids to do it every year, let's get ownership by groups and communities. And I think because of our relationship with the cities and working with public works and it, it does align with, they need to clean up their waterways every year. And, um, and so that's kind of why we started it. It's, we do care about the environment. Um, a lot of people know us as recycling uh, and manage, some people <laughs> only know us for recycling, but we actually manage the landfill. Um, and our goal is to keep things out of the landfill, but in this case, get things to the landfill that should be there, I guess. <laughs> so that was kind of a, just a natural partnership with the communities. Any other questions? All right. How many are you actually going to help with the cleanup? Am I putting everyone on the spot? <laughs> it's, uh, we're gonna have our first cleanup on uh, Saturday. July 19th from 9 to 12. Um, I don't know if you uh, Yeah. <laughs> it's not the end of the world if you don't. <laughs> uh, there is a link I had there so you can sign up for it, and I'll resend that out and just a reminder for everybody. So invite your friends. It doesn't just have to be um, employees. The all volunteers are invited. Um, so, yeah. One thing, Sunday, one thing Tanner and I were talking about before, too, and we've had this question come up is some people are, they're worried about not being physically able to do certain things. And I think you emailed me about having children help. And I think that all types of help is needed. You can have someone work the volunteer check-in. Um, Tanner mentioned if, if you could get someone to drop people off, then pick them up at the next access point so they don't have to walk back to the vehicle. I mean, there's all kinds of activities that if someone doesn't feel capable of lifting or carrying, um, you can, they can run and get water, or they can make sure people are getting water, or things like that. So all types of help is needed. Photos. Someone can take photos. <laughs> and we'll have, I'm sure we'll have time for I'm going to go look at it next week, but there'll be some people who can get into the stream if the water's not too high, and then along the stream banks and all that. Yeah. So it won't just, you don't want to get in the water. Yeah. If you don't have to get in the water. Like there was the, the one um, team in Altoona his son was kind of young and he was worried about him getting in the water and so he actually just walked along the edges. And there's plenty of stuff that he could reach from the edge too with the litter grabber um, and on the banks as well. So sadly there's lots of litter that you can be found. <laughs> so. And I know for full time staff it does count towards the new volunteer um, time that they're getting. Yeah. 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 All right. Well thank you guys for your time. And if you ever need another lunch topic, oh, sorry. You guys have the number that, like, if you see people littering, that you could call? Yeah, the 188-NO-LITTER. What happens if it's a garbage truck? <laughs> you know what? I'm just saying, because I, I have to pick up garbage, and mm -hmm. a lot of the garbage that I have to pick up around the dumpster comes from the, the garbage, garbage truck. truck. Yeah. So is this the commercial dumpster, or are you saying the carts along um, the residential? Yeah. Well, I know that like with residential rules, which we oversee some of that, we always tell people your cart, there's a lot of people that jam that cart full and the cart, the lid's not shut. And so that's why litter happens because the wind, it'll blow it around. And when that cart gets dumped, if it's jam packed, that sometimes, if that lid's not shut in the process of picking it up to dump it in, it can blow away. So the hauler might come back and say, well, if that business would not fill that dumpster too full, it wouldn't blow around. I know, I agree with you. Um, and also there are TARP rules, like trucks aren't supposed to be driving down the roads without being secured. And I have driven behind garbage and recycling trucks and I've seen stuff blow out. And we actually had a meeting today about plastic bags. And one idea from someone at the landfill was, let's have a campaign to tie a knot in your plastic bags. If you can't recycle them, then and you're not reusing them, <laughs> to, like I put garbage in mine, but um, to tie a knot in them, that helps them from blow, not being blow around so much. Plastic bags blow around our landfill like crazy. We have big fences up to stop them from blowing on university, but we have a litter truck that goes around, goes down university, picking up litter that blows out of trucks and vehicles on their way to the landfill. They're supposed to be secured, but it does happen. And if you see it very, like I would call whoever owns that truck. 
and or you can call us and tell us but we need to know is it a waste management truck aspen waste waste connections there's a bunch of them out there but if you can tell us that in the the um, license plate we'll get in touch with that garbage hauler and tell them this truck is doing this it's probably not the driver purposely but it just means they need to do something with that truck to make sure this stuff is secure so um, you could call the no litter number too though they might do it as well but in that case i would say you could call us or the truck the name of the company we're okay with you calling us though because we work with a lot of them and sometimes they might listen to us <laughs> not always but sometimes yeah. so any other questions and it doesn't have to just be about adopt a stream it can be about <laughs> garbage and recycling i was going to tell you if you ever want a recycling rules presentation we have one of those as well so if you ever have another lunch and learn all right. Oh, over here. Oh. Did you guys ever do anything for batteries? Um, we do have, um, if you go to calltorecycle.org and type in your zip, you can get the closest battery recycling drop off, but we also accept them at our Metro Hazardous Waste drop off um, in Bondurant, which isn't always convenient. But if you live close to an internet, interstate batteries or a battery plus, they take them. I will tell you alkaline batteries, the single use ones, you can just toss in the garbage there's hardly any valuable material to recycle. And it, a lot of them will take it, but then they're shipping it out of state and most likely it's going in the garbage there. They're sorting it out from the stuff that has value. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are like, I wanna recycle it at all costs. And it's like, yeah, sometimes people say they take it just to get the other stuff and then they sort it out at the end. So, so don't feel bad about throwing it in the garbage or buy rechargeable ones. That's what I tell people. Any other questions? Hazardous waste questions, we can answer those too. Right. What's the most hazardous thing to, that we have to worry about that being your house? Oh, I don't know if I'm smart enough to answer that question. <laughs> you know, I will tell you one thing I learned. I started working at Metro Waste three and a half years ago, and I broke a CFL light bulb, and I vacuumed it up. And I started working at Metro Waste Authority, and I went to the EPA website to learn how to clean up I'm, you're not supposed to vacuum them up because <laughs> they contain mercury. Um, yeah, you're supposed to open up all the windows, you sweep it up, there's rules. We actually have a link on our website for light bulbs, how to clean them up. But it depends on the home, right? My condo doesn't have anything hazardous, maybe some bleach. Um, but they do, we do have uh, the hazardous waste drop off and we do drop off events. And the goal is we don't want people storing them in their homes and having ac kids having access to it. Um, that's one problem is 54% uh, of the poisonings are children um, in the home ha having access to hazardous waste. So that's why we do those drop off events um, is a lot of stored up stuff you don't want kids to have access to. I'm not sure that I can answer that question. <laughs> we could go to your house and find out <laughs> what you have maybe. <laughs> They say a lot of people are, oh, you know, uh, they overdo Tylenol and aspirin. They take too much. They say that people can hurt themselves from that, too. So any other questions? Anyone need to know where to recycle something weird? If not, if you don't know, um, in the future, you can go to our website, whereitshouldgo.com, and we have a recycling guide with lots of options for things, if you ever want to find out more, like batteries. All right. Thanks for having us, we appreciate it.